All right, we're back to see if we can once again upgrade the motherboard and CPU on my PC without reinstalling Windows 10. So in a previous video, we set out to answer the question of whether we could make an upgrade like this using our current Windows installation. We knew that Windows 10 was really robust and we suspected that it could be done, but I think we're all a little surprised just how uneventful the upgrade went. I mean, it was good, but uh, it just went so smoothly and easily um, it was kind of a surprise. Um, I mounted the new motherboard and CPU, I made all the connections, and I booted off my old C drive. And after a little bit of churning, uh, maybe a reboot or two, Windows booted up as if nothing had changed. So that was great. Um, can we do it again? That's what we're here to find out. Okay, I brought it up the first time around, but I, I do want to say it again. Um, in the past, you would not even attempt to do this. Uh, if you did a CPU motherboard upgrade, you really wanted to reinstall the operating system. You almost never had success of using the old operating system. And if it did work, there were a lot of um, issues that you could see and you would uh, eat up a lot of storage space unnecessarily because now you have a lot of like just INF files and library files and things that aren't relevant anymore that took up space in your hard drive. And you could also see slowdowns too um, just because of maybe background conflicts or things like that. And back then, you know, we didn't have really fast uh, CPUs, we didn't have SSDs, um, so these slowdowns and storage issues were a big deal and uh, to prevent them you just did a, a reinstall, you put, you install a fresh operating system, usually Windows, uh, to avoid that. But I made the case last time, everything is so much faster now that even if there are inefficiencies with using the old operating system, the, the speeds that we're seeing off of the storage devices and the CPU, it's those slowdowns wouldn't even be felt at this point. So as long as you don't have a major conflict that would prevent windows from loading, or you know, you get uh, blue screens of death or something like that, um, I think, you know, you're fine. I, I did this last upgrade. I've been using the PC. Everything is has been just fine. So I want to see if I can do it again. So we'll go over what we are, uh, what we have now and what we're going to in a second. All right, so I'm going to be upgrading from this X570 motherboard and going to this Gigabyte uh, B650. And uh, this is a platform change. So it's going from uh, AM4 to AM5, right? So the sockets, different chipsets. Um, this, the, the AM5 uses the DDR5 RAM. So when you go to the AM5, uh, you're going to have to upgrade your RAM. So uh, the, the CPU, right now I'm running the 5900X uh, on the X570 board. I'm an, I went to a 7800X3D. Um, so you could argue, you know, maybe this isn't even an upgrade. Maybe it's more like a side grade or possibly even a downgrade, depending on what you're doing with the computer. Um, you know, I may see less performance in the productivity apps like uh, Premiere Pro and some of that stuff. Um, gaming is probably... Uh, it should be faster if I had a faster video card, but I think gaming is going to be pretty pretty much the same. So why the upgrade if there's really not much gain? Um, honestly, like I'm kind of geeky about this stuff. You know, I think if you're watching this video, you probably are too. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but um, I don't know. I I wanted to go to AM5. Uh, that is the path forward now. Um, so it is the latest greatest socket and any future upgrades will probably be a CPU only, keep the motherboard. Um, and then when you hit the limit, um, you know, maybe the socket changes 
then maybe do another motherboard. But it's just, I'm kind of an enthusiast and into it, and I wanted to make this upgrade. The other thing is, Micro Center had a really good package deal on this upgrade. So right now, the X570 and the 5900X has pretty good value. So when I sell my old stuff, and you figure the good price on the new stuff, it really isn't a big um, jump in, in cost. So the cost is very reasonable to upgrade to the latest technology. All right, so I'm going with a Cooler Master NR600 case. It's kind of a budget case, but not as low end as a lot of budgets. Um, this was $70. Uh, it comes with two fans. It does really well in the reviews for airflow. Uh, it's got a mesh front, which will probably get clogged with dust, but I'll just hit it with compressed air. And it's in a cabinet, so I don't really care if it starts to look ugly when it gets dusty. Um, the biggest gain for me is much wider than the other case that I have, which is an old case, which really was made for a different time. Um, nowadays we have these big CPU coolers, so this width will really come in handy for that. And the other thing is this, the, how much, how much deeper this is, um, that's going to make a huge difference because video cards today are so huge and the case I'm using, it didn't, ex didn't intend to have a, a GPU that big in it. In fact, I even had to bend some of the metal to get the thing in there last time around, so... Anyhow, this will be good um, to upgrade the case. It does require a lot more work, though. I have to pull everything out of the old one and, and you know, put it all in the new one. So it's going to slow me down, but it'll be a, a good thing going forward to have this case. All right, you can see there's a lot going on in this old case. The CPU cooler is almost, almost doesn't fit. Um, the GPU almost hits the the cage here for storage um i brought it up before i don't worry about wire management um it nobody can see this case it's inside a cabinet i do look at temperatures and uh you know as long as it's everything's working within its spec i don't really care so but with the new case it should be easier to get this stuff out of the way so anyway i've got to rip everything out of here so I'll start doing that, and then we'll get to the new motherboard. All right, motherboard's partially assembled here. I've got the RAM, CPU is installed. The base of the CPU cooler is installed. That's um, a Thermalright Phantom Spirit 120. So I probably will mount that before I put the whole thing in the case. Looking at everything, it's probably going to be easier. It's got two fans, so uh, it'd be easier to do that out here. Um, I've got two M2 drives, the C drive here, and then another M2 under there. The motherboard takes three. Um, all right, let me keep going. I have to say, the CPU cooler, the Thermalrite, that thing is a great buy. That was only 30 bucks. Um, it comes with everything, uh, and it even comes with thermal grease. The thing does really well in the reviews, it moves a ton of air, has two 120 fans, so... It really is a good deal, but, you know, it's nice to not... I have paste, but my paste at this point is kind of old. So I'd much rather use some nice fresh stuff that came with the cooler. So re that's really a good deal. All right, real quick. I got my power supply in there. I did hear in the reviews that there's not a lot of room with the power supply because you have one of these walls from the... Um, hard drive carriage the wall can be removed but once you do that then your hard drive is not going to slide in and out so a lot of times these days people don't even have mechanical hard drives just ssds so in that case i'd remove that wall then you have a lot more to work with but right now i'm not sure if you can see but and this is a modular power supply so i was able to you know disconnect things and move cables around luckily but if it was any bigger, or if it wasn't modular, it might be even more difficult. All right, we've got everything together. Look how much more room there is. Boy, just the way things are laid out and the way the cables can go behind this plate is huge. But I think I've got everything connected. Um, 
you never really know till you hit that power switch so hopefully we get it to post and we can get into BIOS, make sure that it sees the connected storage devices, sees the memory, properly reports the CPU, stuff like that. And then we'll go try to get into Windows. All right, so I just fixed an issue where uh, when I hit the power button, the fan um, was rubbing up against some wiring. So I quickly shut it down and I cleared the wiring away. So. Let's give it a boot. Let's give it a shot here. See if it'll boot. See if we can get into BIOS. We need to put the power on. All right, we have video signal, which is good. New CPU installed, FTPM, PSP, and V corrupted, or FTP structure change. Press Y to reset. If you have BitLocker or an encryption enabled, I don't. Press N to keep previous FTPM record and continue system boot. All right, so. Let's see if we can get into BIOS. Delete, delete, delete. Mm, what's this? It's doing something. I hope it's not booting because I would like to get into BIOS first. Just so I can see if everything's connected and reporting properly. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that's pretty unbelievable. I mean, that's my desktop. Like, it wouldn't even go into BIOS. I didn't even get to see uh, anything in BIOS. But it it's actually booting Windows. And this is the second... Actually, this is the third motherboard and CPU on this Windows install. It's pretty amazing. I, I don't know if I'm going to have issues, but... Um, the fact that it's in Windows right now... It's pretty amazing. Okay, so it's still probably finding hardware and trying to, you know, configure itself for the new hardware, the chipset, all that stuff. We're going to give it a little bit of time, and then I'm going to go in and start poking around, see if everything's working okay, and, you know, device manager is reporting things okay, and also I want to go into BIOS too, so... Anyway, we'll be back. Okay, so this looks like it's got like an advanced mode and easy mode. If you go to easy mode, it kind of summarizes all the hardware that it's seeing. So here's the CPU. It sees the 32 gigs of RAM, so two 16 gig sticks in these slots. Um, I don't have XMP enabled. I'm going to wait until I get everything nice and steady and I'm confident that everything's configured properly. Then I'll go back and I'll tweak the memory speed. Um, it's got all of the storage devices reporting properly, which we I saw in Windows Explorer once we went into Windows. Here's the M2 stuff, the SSDs. Um... And the fact that it's reporting the CPU, RAM, all that stuff, what I'm going to do is save and exit. All right, we're back to the desktop. Um, let's go, now that we've got the Ethernet connection, because again, I wasn't uh, connected to the Internet. Let's see if Device Manager, what that looks like. Uh... 
network controller, display adapter. I should be able to get rid of that. Because it's got... Oh, that's probably the um, internal GPU. And I don't know what these are. It's probably related to the motherboard. I can go and look at the drivers on Gigabyte's website. Okay, uh, I just want to show this. So this is Gigabyte's control center. Um, so it's just a piece of software that runs and it defaults to um, showing available updates. And you saw in Device Manager I had some things that weren't loaded yet. So I need to go out get the latest drivers. So this software is pretty handy because it gives you all of the, the latest drivers. So it's going to do it in one shot. But as all of these tools seem to do, you got to keep your eyes open because if you just had, it defaults to have everything checked off. So it wants to load every single thing in this list. And if I let that happen, I would have had Norton Internet Security installed on my, my machine, which is a mess. You don't want that. Um, so you got to keep your heads up with this stuff because they pitch it as, oh, you know, this is going to make things easier. But then you end up with bloatware and you end up with garbage software. So if you see, I'm getting rid of, I don't care about control center. I don't care about these things. In fact, as soon as the drivers are loaded, I'm going to pro probably remove this. So I don't need updates to it. And um, this is firmware, which I'll just go to the website if I need to uh, download BIOS firmware, um, a BIOS update. So that's not checked. And I don't know what these two are, but I don't want them. So... Anyhow, just giving you a heads up. So here's install. And we'll let that load and we'll come back and see what's happening in device manager. Okay, there's the case inside the cabinet. And when I close the door, I've got it open enough where it can draw in fresh air. All right. So before I conclude the video, I want to just kind of geek out a second comparing the two CPUs. So if you're not interested in the comparison, just jump ahead to the conclusion. Like I'll have titles on the segments of the video. But for those that might be looking at these two CPUs, um, I'll just give you my, my experience real quick. Um, okay, so with gaming, right? The 5900X... It's got 12 cores. It's got more cores than the 7800X3D. So with some games that can leverage those cores, it's gonna it'll run better. Um, and like uh, Battlefield 2042, for instance, that I noticed a lot less CPU usage on the 5900X. And I'm GPU limited on that game. I've got the 4070Ti and um, it's the CPU isn't holding me back in that game. It's the graphics card. Uh, but with the new CPU, definitely the usage is higher. Um, it's not near 100%, um, but it is higher across the board. Um, but that CPU does have a faster clock speed, um, and it can boost higher. So even though it's got less cores, there's a little trade-off there. It does have faster clocks. Um, so as far as, uh, temperature, the temperature is way down and that could be the case, right? Like that case is much different than the way I had everything before. Um, but the other thing is, I just think that 7800X3D is just a more efficient CPU, like instructions per clock. Like, I think that... I think TDP on that CPU is uh, 120, and the 5900X is less. So you would think that the um, the 5900X would run cooler and draw less power, but if you look on the web, people are saying that it's drawing like 140 and more, and obviously not at idle, but it's definitely drawing a lot more than what you'd expect from the TDP rating. So, and with the temperatures so much cooler, 
I'm thinking that 7800X 3D is just a more efficient and, you know, just less power hungry CPU. So I'm happy with that. Um, so for 2D stuff, uh, like I did go into Premiere Pro and I did some media exports, transcoding, things like that, trying to stress the system. And honestly, I'd say it's about the same. Um, that again, especially Premiere Pro, should be able to leverage the, the more cores of the 5900X, but see to the pants, like media exports weren't any different. I even saved one file and I timed it with the old setup and I was within a minute. One was like 21, one was 20 point something, you know. So the 7800X 3D technically was a little slower with that, but it was practically the same. So anyway, just to geek out again, right? Like it's it was not an upgrade in any way um, for the things that I do. But, um, I am on AM5 now, which I'm happy about. And that's true. I didn't think of this, but I didn't play around with the memory, um, uh, speed. So I, I can go in there and enable XMP and play around and just tweak it. Maybe, you know, performance will get a little bit better. All right. So that's that. Hopefully that helps if anyone's interested in that stuff. Um, all right, so the conclusion. We are on our third CPU and motherboard on this installation of Windows. Um, this is not a light installation of Windows. I have a lot of installed software. I mean, I, I can't even think of all the things that are happening even behind the scenes. And then, of course, like my, you know, Microsoft Suite of uh, tools. I've got Adobe Creative Cloud. I've got, I watch TV on this thing with, with a HD home run. I, there's just so many th things loaded on this win Windows installation. Um, really, like if anything could have gone wrong, it should have with so much stuff. But this is the third installation and it was successful again. And just playing around um, with everything, trying to open things, test things, it just seems like everything is fine. So I have to say, um, don't be afraid. Give this a try. It, it, if you're thinking like, I don't want to upgrade because I have to reinstall Windows and I have to like reload everything and bring all my data files back in. It's worth a try to do it. Uh, I've had, had success three times. Other people um, that have commented on my other video have had success. And I know I've been with AMD the whole time, So, but the chipsets are different every time. But those people, a lot of people commented they went from AMD to Intel, they went from Intel to AMD, and they had success too. Um, I would just advise you have to back everything up. Don't just do it blind. I mean, make sure that you've got copies of everything or, you know, just properly back up everything just in case there's a hiccup and you, it doesn't install. That way you don't lose anything. But with everything backed up, uh, the ch chances are really good for success. So hopefully this video helps. And good luck with your upgrades.